G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's video we're going to talk about a history of turbine varnish. So if you have been a turbine operator um, for any number of years, let's say this is you, um, you might have even been in the game for the last 40 years or so, something that you might have noticed is that the varnish problem seems to have been getting worse. And this is actually feedback that I've gotten from a lot of turbine operators. You might think, what the hell? Why is this the case when lubricant technology has come so far? Why is it that varnish is a more and more severe problem in today's gas turbines? So we're going to talk today about a bit of a history of how uh, turbine oils have changed over the years, how the operation of gas turbines has changed over the years, and how that's contributing to the varnish problem. Some backgrounds and definitions before we start. So first of all, when we talk about varnish, we're talking about the hard, baked-on lacquer. So we're not talking about sludge. Sludge can probably be wiped off with a, with a rag. Varnish um, can't really be removed in that way. Varnish is also formed by the breakdown, predominantly, of the antioxidant additives. So it is um, lubricant breakdown byproducts which um, cause varnish, um, but the breakdown of the antioxidant package is, if you like, the predominant material that goes into uh, making varnish. There's also no, te no test for varnish. So we can test for varnish precursors in the oil, and we can look at the um, oxidation stability of the oil, and we can also look at the amount of aminic and phenolic antioxidant additives remaining, but we can't actually test for is there varnish occurring? Really only a physical inspection is going to tell you whether there is actually varnish in your system. The other thing about the varnish precursors, so um, I'll do another video on the mechanisms of varnish formation, but effectively what happens is you get a breakdown of some of the additives, um, it gets held in solution for a little while, and then when it finds a, a cold spot or a low flow area, um, it comes out of solution, and if you like, it plates out. So this, this is what we're talking about when we talk about varnish. So let's talk about some of the factors that can influence varnish and how they've changed over time. So on our two axes, we're going to say varnish tendency is on one axis, and time, if you like, on the other axis. I'm not going to be... I'm going to talk about this stuff generally. So the first thing is base oil oxidation stability. Now, the history of this is that turbine oils um, started off as being almost exclusively group 1s. Um, over time, the oxidation stability requirements from the turbine OEMs has gotten a lot more stringent. So if you look at some of the GE specs now and their, um, their requirements for RPVOT, for example, um, they've gotten much uh, more stringent. And that's forced a change on the lubricant manufacturing side um, from group one to group three. And as you do that, the oxidation stability of the lubricant improves. And so that should mean that you will see less varnish, right? So more oxidation stability should mean less varnish. Okay, so that's factor number one. However, as you do change the base oil, um, you're also affecting the base oil solubility. As we know from my previous email, uh, video on um, uh, the different API base oil groups, as you move from a group one to a group three, you're actually reducing the solubility of the oil. So in particular, as you start to pull out some of the aromatic compounds, the solubility decreases. So the, the solubility of a group three is much less than that of group one. Um, and solubility is something that you need to prevent varnish. So if you could have um, components in the oil, uh, but you're able to hold them into solution and they never played out, you won't have varnish. But if you have poor solubility, um, any varnish precursors will tend to play it out more easily. So this is a factor which is contributing to increased varnish tendency. All right, third factor. Turbine inlet temperatures. Um, this is something which is obviously not controlled by the lubricant manufacturers, but basically over the last few years or so, um, 
Turbine inlet temperatures have been increasing from probably about 1200 degrees Celsius to in the order of 1600 degrees Celsius. Now that change is driven by uh, the turbine manufacturers wanting to increase the thermal efficiency of the gas turbines. Um, and to achieve that, well, one of the ways that you achieve that is increasing the turbine inlet temperature. Now, you know, the lubricant is not going to see 1600 degrees Celsius, but you know, as you increase the heat of the entire system, the temperature that the lubricant sees is going to be higher, and that's going to accelerate the oxidation process, and therefore the formation of varnish precursors. Then we've also got operational factors, and there's a few of these. So we've got combined cycles, the, the increased use of, of combined cycle systems, um, peaking operations, small reservoir sizes, and extended oil drains and maintenance intervals. And all of these are contributing to an increase in varnish tendency. So if we were to look at them, okay, combined cycle systems. Generally, there's a shared lube oil system um, between the gas and the steam turbine. Um, so if you are unaware of uh, combined cycle gas turbine systems, effectively, it's a, it's a gas turbine producing power, but the heat that comes off that system then drives a steam turbine. Um, when you have a common lube oil system, the lubricant has to deal with um, you know, more water than a standard gas turbine oil would need to. It tends to get worked a little bit harder. All right, peaking operations. This is really important because um, pre-2000, uh, if you looked at most of the uh, gas turbines of, across the fleet, about 80% of them were operating as continuous power units. So you turn the turbine on, and effectively it keeps running at almost full load um, until a major shutdown or maintenance was required. Um, peaking capacity was really only about probably 20% of all the units. Post-2000, we've seen a huge change in the way that um, gas turbines are used and deployed. This is down to a number of factors. Um, part of it is to do with things like grid stability, but a lot of it has to do with the rise of renewables, right? So um, the need to kind of fill the gaps uh, in the grid has necessitated a drive towards um, gas turbines, which are fast start, right? So they can provide power really quickly. Um, the grids tend to like them because they also provide a bit of rotational inertia as well. Now, the thing about peaking operations is that if you are constantly ramping the system up and down, that's fluctuations in the temperature of the lube oil system. So you are working the oil really hard at peak temperatures, and then the whole system cools down. And when you cool a lube oil system down, um, that reduces its solubility, right? So, so higher temperature oils are more soluble. And as you reduce the solubility, then all those varnish precursors tend to fall out of solution. So peaking operations are really bad from a varnish tendency standpoint. Um, finally, uh, extended oil drains and maintenance intervals. <clears throat> so basically, we're asking the lubricant to, to last longer. Um, so the lubricant is worked harder and we get more breakdown of the antioxidant package. So when you put all of these factors together, um, you know, yes, we have generally as, a, as an industry moved from, if you like, poorer quality base stocks you know, or group ones through to group threes, right? So we've improved the quality of the base oil um, and that has improved the oxidation stability of the oil. But there are so many more factors that are acting against us, right? So reduced solubility, um, the change in the way that the gas turbines are operated, the change in the, the turbine um, operating temperatures, um, all of these things are acting against us. And that's why, even though lubricant technology has gotten substantially better over the last 40 years, we're actually seeing more turbine varnish problems in 2020 than we probably were back in the 80s. So I hope that's been a, a good explainer. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.